Welcome back to another episode. Today, I want to take a quick look at two social e-commerce platforms. The first one we're going to take a quick look at is Pinterest. The second one we're going to take a quick look at is Etsy. And for both these companies, we're just going to look at recent news, but we're also going to look at things like fundamentals and valuation metrics and technicals. I want to see which one of the two I prefer the most at the moment. If you're in Etsy or Pinterest, let me know in the comments below, which one are you more bullish in? If this is your first time here, guys, make sure to hit the thumbs up, make sure to hit the subscribe button and make Make sure to check out the pin comment for 10 free stock ideas right now so let's get started right pinterest right now on the day is pretty much flat as i am recording this episode right it's up 0.04 percent so pretty much flat but we can see from its 52 week high the stock is down about 43.89 percent the main reason for the stock price drop is 2020 was such a strong year for both Pinterest and Etsy, right? With COVID lockdown restrictions, a lot of people had more time to search online. Unfortunately, now that lockdown eases have stopped, uh, lockdown restrictions have eased up. Um, some of these investors are worried that, hey, uh, we're going to see a decrease in monthly active users. Uh, we're going to see a decrease in traffic. And obviously that is um, that is happening the real the real winner will be the one who's able to keep users in their platforms and be able to monetize those users the most uh so right now we can see pinterest if you're not familiar you can go to pinterest and this is where you kind of get ideas uh so you might be like oh say how the heck does pinterest get um make money then well with the ideas that they do they have some form of advertisement affiliate links and we can see right now in forms of revenue this company makes most of its revenue through advertisements uh, in recent in recent weeks and months, Pinterest continues to increase their overall user experience. Uh, one way they're doing is they're making what they call slideshow for collections. Shoppers on Pinterest have 85% bigger baskets than shoppers on other platforms, and they spend twice as much per month. Today, they are announcing, and this was October 6th, so yeah, it's actually today, they announced that a new solution to help advertisers encourage that bigger basket behavior with slideshows for collections. Uh, so here we can see slideshow for collections. If, if you're looking at a certain area, right, maybe you're looking for fall decorations. Now you're going to have this numerous collection showing different slideshows. So, so if you like everything, you can just add everything to your basket, right? So this is kind of increasing. They're saying that, hey, we our users spend more money. So let's take advantage of it. Other things that um, Pinterest is doing is they're introducing new ways for creators to earn money and partner with brands on Pinterest. They're bringing a lot of new content creators to their platforms that you can make like small videos short-term videos or pictures where you can tag for example the products that you're wearing and this allows that content creator to kind of have affiliate links and make money through that driving new content new content creators which at the end of the day makes more products or more content for pinterest which drives more users do you want 10 free stock picks right now well if you do let's take a quick listen to today's sponsor a great reason why i'm able to provide so much content to you guys for free i want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video motley fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels you all know how much i love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment so I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 free stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beat the market by more than 4x. Go to fool.com slash Jose to get your free 10 stock picks now. We can see they're also doing idea pins globally. This is more like their short term videos. And for example, in April 5th of 2021, they are expanding their advertisement into Brazil, right? So we can see this is a company that's expanding its type of content creation, ways to grab new users, and they're also expanding globally. Uh, the second company we're going to take a quick look at it's etsy and etsy is traded under the nasdaq as ticker etsy as i am recording this episode the stock is up 0.5 percent but we can see from its 52 week high very similar the stock has seen better days it's down 16.39 percent uh so etsy for those not familiar this is where you kind of go and buy unique items right if you're looking for unique crafted items like something for halloween um, maybe something more personal for anniversary gift for a birthday um this is the place you come for so etsy in the most recent in the most recent quarters it's kind of improved or increased the markets they're hitting through acquisitions for example they own they bought reverb which is more like a music e-commerce where people resell 
resale instruments uh, depop which is a fashion um, resale platform and they also bought elo 7 which is pretty much the etsy of brazil so they're growing internationally and they're growing into different e-commerce as well uh, then if we take a look at etsy's revenue breakdown most of their revenue comes from the marketplace they make money from fees right listing fees transaction fees payment platforms off-site ads then they're growing their service revenue this is advertising this is shipping labels this is other uh, in all forms I, I do believe i like etsy's market a little bit more or their their overall business place a little bit more because they're doing a little bit of everything right the marketplace and the service revenue which does advertisement um, Etsy is also focusing on creating some form of short-term video content or, or video production or ways to bring content creators to their platform, again, to drive more users to look at Etsy. All right, the next thing I want to do is take a quick look at fundamentals. Here, let's start off with Pinterest. Let's start off with quarterly revenue growth. In the most recent quarter, it grew 125% year over year. And the previous three quarters, it grew over 50%, some over 70%. 70 percent if we take a look at etsy etsy seems similar growth especially during covid uh, the COVID times it grew almost it, it grew every quarter during COVID time about triple digit growth for example the quarter ending march 31st it grew 141 percent uh, the most recent earnings uh which ended in june 30th of, thir of 2021 they only saw 23.36 percent revenue growth Again, this is kind of showing that slowdown as people kind of go back into work and lockdown restrictions ease up. They have a little bit of investors worried, but still 23.6% is still impressive. If we take a look at gross margins and profit margins, gross margins for pins are about 77.6%. For Etsy, they are about 73.8%, right? Most of these, both of these are some form of marketplace or, or kind of social platform. So they usually have a, a form of high gross margins. If we take a look at trailing 12 months, Pinterest is just starting to become profitable on a gap basis, uh, which is pretty impe impressive taking a look at trailing 12 months. Etsy, on the other hand, has been profitable in trailing 12 months in gap, pro in gap um, profit margins for numerous years. So we can see both of these are in a little different stages in, in their life. Etsy has been, uh, I want to say, profitable since 2017, maybe even earlier than that, where only now in 2021, when we're looking at trailing 12 months, has Pinterest become profitable. So we can see definitely different stages. I want to take a quick look at balance sheet balance sheet for pinterest looks super exciting current investments of 1.1 billion dollars and very low non-current debt so they have plenty of cash at hands and no debt and this is what you want to see right this is a company that's just recently profitable in gap earnings um so you want them to have a very very strong balance sheet etsy on the other hand is a more mature company so they're like hey we can be a little bit more leveraged etsy is also doing a lot more acquisitions and we can see non-current debt has increased to about 2.3 billion dollars for Etsy and they have about two billion dollars in cash and cash equivalents and about 400 million in current investments so roughly about 2.5 billion dollars in cash 2.3 billion dollars in debt so they're they're not leveraged they're not leveraged at all but that ratio is almost one-to-one -one of cash and short-term investments to debt but like we said we saw right Etsy is one that has been profitable for numerous numerous years now if we take a look at cash flow from operations Pinterest very similar right it's just almost it's in early stages of becoming positive in cash flow from operations um in trailing 12 months in the most recent earnings it had about 17 percent operating cash flow margins if we take a look at etsy a whole different story this one operating cash flow margins of about 32.5 percent uh, and it has been profitable and positive in operating cash flow margins for numerous numerous years uh, so now I wanted to take a quick look at both these companies. And, and I want to say both of them are, are looking pretty interesting in different stages. I want to see Pinterest is a little bit more a growth story. It can still increase those margins a lot better. Um, it can increase that operating cash flow margins. Where Etsy, on the other hand, it's a little bit more mature. Even though they can continue to grow, we're seeing growth all around. I, I don't believe that growth is going to be as fast. If we take a look at forward price to sales ratio, I was honestly shocked that they're both sitting at similar levels. Um, I would have expected one to be higher than the other one. Normally, Pinterest tends to have tends to be more expensive than Etsy. So right now, for them sitting at similar levels, historically, is showing that hey, Pinterest is cheaper than it normally is because normally it's above Etsy. But Etsy is really moving things around, right? With everything they're doing, I believe Etsy is becoming a stronger brand with all those acquisitions, um, with all those um, movements in in a stronger user experience pinterest if we take a look at ev to abita very similar right normally 
Uh, Pinterest tends to be a lot more expensive than Etsy, but that's not the case. They're sitting at similar, similar levels. Uh, so in terms of historically, it does tell me that, hey, Pinterest is looking a lot cheaper than it normally does. In terms of future looking, I do like Etsy's market a little bit better. Uh, so it all depends on what you're looking at. If we take a quick look at technicals, Etsy right now is sitting next to a short term moving average and medium term moving average. So not too overextended. Pinterest, on the other hand, is definitely a lot lower um, than this moving averages. So this could be a nice buying opportunity if one is bullish on Pinterest, right? Uh, technicals don't really tell me, hey, it's buy or sell. It just tells me, hey, Jose has a good portion of the risk been eliminated. I think for pins, yes, but obviously volatility in the market can continue. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care. Have a good night and see you next time.